Okay, we approve the recording. Just got a few more students popping in here. All right. Hey, welcome everybody. Um, we're really excited to have a guest speaker today. And uh, I know this is, you know, unique time. So thanks for your patience and coordinating all this. But um, with us today, and he was planning to come down for a conference and be here in person, but sadly, you know, government okay. regulations and such. But we have with us, uh, you're in the class, you see him on the screen. If you're at home, you see him on the screen. David Kincaid is one of the top grant experts in Canada. He's actually a well-known author an expert and he helps organizations fundraise and get grants and in our case we're working in sport and recreation and you want to do amazing things for your communities so he's one of these guys that helps get that money going to do those important things because you know it's nice to have these ideas but how do you put your dreams into action so um we've been chatting the last few weeks and he's got some really fun ideas to share with you and an activity. So today's going to be really interactive. We want to keep you engaged. And um, after his intro, we're going to put you into some breakout rooms. And then you're going to pitch something. So uh, I'll let him tell you more. But we're going to start off if you want to take it from here, David, and uh, the floor is yours. If you could kind of keep your volume as high as possible, then it'll work well, I think. But everyone said they can hear so far. So can, can everyone uh... Can everyone hear me okay? Is this level of voice good? I'm looking at the class too. Can the class good? All right, all right, so you missed the most important part of my intro. I was a hockey referee for like, you know, eight years, a timekeeper. And in high school, I ran the, the city's, uh, my city's tournament directors. And then, uh, and uh, I still play rec hockey and I'm not that good. But uh, I've consistently won uh, the most, uh, what's congeniality award sportsman. Like I'm typically the most sportsman, like, like <laughs> sticks it to the, whatever the sport. I'm not, not the best player ever, but, uh, yeah. So I love sports and I was so excited when they said, uh, or sorry, when Laura invited me in and said, Hey, do you want to speak to these people about sports? And I was like, I would love to do this. Uh, but I want to make it interesting for you. I don't want to bore you. So we're dividing the class. I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes about grants and government, which just by a show of hands, and I'd like to keep this interactive, even on the chat. How many of you know, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, because I can see the class about government? Like how much do you know about politics? Here, here's a better question. Who here has taken introduction to government? Has anyone? One thumb up. <laughs> got one <laughs> thumb up. And it, what about in the chat box? Let's what? see in the chat. You can use your chat. Here. I need nobody in the chat. There we go. I just went, I threw a chat down there. So if you could just message me if you've taken it. No. no. All right. So we're going to talk about government first and we're going to do it my way, which is different than the way most people do it. I'm going to draw it for you. And then, um, and then we're going to talk about grants. And if you're sitting there saying, this is the biggest waste of my time. What do grants have to do with sports? And I'm going to argue that government and grants has uh, maybe, you know, it's different at the total pro level NFL, but getting there and the whole way up the chain is just loaded with government grants and government policy. So with that introduction, I'm, we're gonna do a couple of things. I'll just recap it. I know I said this once, but we're gonna do 20 minutes to talk. I got my timer on. We're gonna break, and I'm gonna teach about government then teach about grants. We're gonna go through three grants rather quickly. Uh, three different levels of government. We're going to break you into teams. You can have about 15 minutes to do a grant on a page, which I'll show you what that is in a minute. And then we're going to spend the last uh, 30 minutes of class. You're going to pitch. So each, each group will have you in, um, I'll let Laura figure out the teams, but I think you're going to be in groups of three. You're going to have one minute to pitch your grant uh, and we're going to vote on you uh, uh, who gets the best. And I think Laura's got some full-on extra points 
participation points so to make it competitive because i'm sure this is probably the most competitive class in the entire university with a bunch of sports people so let's get started so can you see my screen okay yeah it's loading all right just let me know when you got it okay got it okay now we, this is kind of great doing this on the day after an election but i want to show you something so there, this is how our government works. And then we're going to talk about grants. So there's us over here, people, right? Also known as, let me see if I can get the chat going as well. What do we, in politics, we call them, you like voters, the electric, it goes on and on, right? Now over here is, pardon my drawing the Alberta legislature, we'll call it. And then up here, we'll have, if you go to Ottawa, uh, this is, again, this is parliament building in Ottawa. So now I apologize if this is super elementary for you, just bear with me, but I just want this to be super simple so you get it, okay? So this is the way our country works. We have these people, us, and our, our country is divided up into um, basically a map. So just take this as can, uh, Canada for a sec, which is a brutal drawing, but bear with me. And basically, let's just say this is the Western part. So this is, and this is Alberta, Saskatchewan, and then sort of like Manitoba, Ontario goes out that way. And then down to the... Um, <laughs> looks like a dragon or something. But anyways, these are ridings in the provinces. So we elect people, or so we elect people to political parties, send them here. So provincially, it's the map is divided up into ridings. We send, I think it's like 87 seats. And then federally, we send, I don't know the exact number right now, so call it high 300 seats. The people that wins the most seats forms the government. Now I'm going to slow down for a minute. But I wish I could see you guys for a sec. Does everybody understand? I'm just going to see you guys. You know, feel free to turn your cameras on too, guys, if, if you want, so I can see you. But does, is everyone familiar with, and again, if this is too elementary for you, I apologize, but the Alberta legislature, everyone knows it, right, in, in Edmonton, and then the one in Ottawa. So it's two levels of government, right? We've got the, the provincial, and then we've got the federal. And there's a third level of government, which is what? Throw it in the chat or speed it up. There's three levels of government. The third one is, give you a hint. You're municipal, sitting. Said. You got it. Municipal. You're in the city. So we have three levels of government. We have the municipal, we have the provincial, and we have the federal. Now think about this for a sec. We elect, depending on what, let's say we're all in downtown Calgary right now. We elect people to the municipal, to the provincial, and to the federal. Now it gets a little bit keep walking with me for a second. Let's say we don't know politics that much. We're in sports. We're, we're not paying that attention, but we care about what well, we care about sports and we want people to do something about sports. So we, when politicians come to our door, they say, what do you care about? Well, we want to grow the sports industry in Alberta. And they're like, okay, we'll create a policy. So the municipal politicians are creating policies about sports. And then federally and provincially, they have different jurisdictions based in our constitution, section 91, 92, 93, you can check it out. So they will fund things differently. So for example, who would fund the uh, Olympic committee? You can just kind of guess it's probably the federal government, right? But it gets, you kind of have to get your head around then the province would have municipal jurisdiction and they would run programs. So if you don't understand, if you don't understand the basics of government, Grants are super, super confusing for people. People just don't understand them. They're like, well, isn't it just free money? Now I'm gonna go back to uh, this epic drawing for a sec. And, oh, can you see the whiteboard? Am I yes. Yeah, we got it. You got the whiteboard okay? Yeah. So when people run for 
these offices, they run on something called, let's see, level two. Anyone want to take a stab at what they call these bunch of promises? Platforms, they said? Bingo. Bingo. They have an election platform. They say, so if you elect us, we'll get, you know, we'll help you get uh, elected. Uh, sorry, you elect us. This is what we're going to do. Now, I'm just going to do a quick diversion just to make your life better. But if you go to somewhere like this, this is Tech Nation. So your students in the election platform, they always say, hey, we want to put youth to work. So if you're a post-secondary student, this is, I'll show you, a grant. Um, they got a new website. Where did it go? Right here. Look at this. A subsidy. So all of you in this class right now can get an employer, can get a grant to hire you for the summer, the fall, or the winter, and they'll get 7,500 bucks. So you could go to the Calgary Flames and you could say, hey, Flames or Leafs or NFL, or what, uh, I think you have to be in Canada. So MLB team or a junior team, want to work with you. I want to do all your digital marketing. That entity can get a grant to pay you. Now, chances are they won't know about it, right? Because how are they going to go from not knowing much about government to understanding delivery agents, which I'm going to explain in a second, to finding this grant to hire you? Like, it's just not on the radar. And if you're not paying attention right now or you're daydreaming, this is probably the most important thing I'm leaving you with because you figure this out, you can probably get pretty much any job you want for, I think, for the rest of the, because nonprofits and for businesses can get grants to hire you. And they can't give this money away. They can't give it away. They're, they're, they have so much money and they can't have enough students. So anyway, I just wanted to make your life a little bit better. That's the reason why I'm here today. Is that okay, Laura? Um, can you, it's still on the um, drawing. Were you trying to share screen to show that website oh, yes. or? It was, yeah, hold on, yeah. I'll show you this. Awesome. Yeah, just jump in if I, guys, if you don't follow, just let me know. It's this, did you see this? Yeah, we see it now. So, so this it's is technationcanada.ca. Yeah, so you can get that grant. Now, where that come from, so is there any questions on that before I go any further? We good? Nice. Okay, we'll go back. Laura, just, just let me know if there's any questions, okay? Cool. Then we'll go here, um, back to the whiteboard. Uh, I'm on two screens. So can you see the whiteboard, Laura? Yeah, we see the, like, the whiteboard. We see, yeah, that's the full whiteboard now. Okay, beauty. So here's what happens. So you've got these election uh, politicians, both federally and provincially, right? With platforms, say, I'm gonna get youth to work, I'm gonna get youth to work, but they're also saying sports. And then what happens is this, they win and then they say, well, how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna help sport? Like, all I know is I met a bunch of students and they were saying sports really important, so we wanna do something, what can we do? So they go to the bureaucrats, which are people that work in the government who run these programs. By the way, there's another set of jobs for you. Some of you, if you want a job, there's jobs in government for sports, right? And they make the policy, they make the program, or I'll show you in a sec. So they, let's say they say, well, let's make a grant. And then people can, organizations can apply for the grant, get funding, and then run their events. Good idea, way easier. We don't have to create a program. We don't have to create a body. We just say, here's some cash, have at her. <clears throat> so what happens is voters send money to government, comes up like this, comes up like this. These guys make laws, form grants, for these people to compete with and get. And the best idea is get the money because these are gonna implement their policy. So this is where it gets really interesting. If you, student listening to this right now, whoa, um, say, 
did you just call me? Why don't you just call me when I was like, student, what? Yeah, you called out. What do you want? Um, you can go and say, I want to shape the policy, right? You can say, I, uh, I'm a student. I want to shape the policy. You, you want to make sure, or you want to win this grant, figure out what they want. These guys want because it's their money and you write the grant in their way to help them achieve their mandate. And that's how you win grants. Now, that's kind of like the basics. There's government, they run election platforms. They say, we want to do things. So you want to be involved in educating politicians when they're running for election about sports and the importance of sports. When then you get into these organizations and you start working for them, the government's a key partner, right? And never mind when we get into building venues, right? It's always a hot potato when the local government's going to invest money in this big, the saddle dome or whatever, right? So it's very political. So politics is in government is a huge stakeholder for you guys. And the sooner that you can know that, the more effective you can be at a high level. And I'm telling you right now, I work with CEOs across the country and a lot of them don't have that government background. So it's just another what do they call it? Arrow in your back, whatever the backpack is. I don't know, backpack, quiver, I don't know. <laughs> but you want that skill set and it's pretty easy to get. I wouldn't say it's easy to get, it takes a little bit of time, but it can be super fun. And my guess is this is a sports crowd. So you're super social and politics is super social. It was the only uh, uh, program I was good in. I had like a 1.6 GPA first year. And then I got into politics and graduated first class honors because I got into politics. So, and I was trying and I told an ATB, I was at ATB giving a talk on grants and there were three comedians, ATB comics in the crowd. And when I said I had a 1.6 GPA and I was trying, and then I got, one of them heckled me and said, and that was in arts, which I thought was pretty funny. Anyway, <laughs> so that's how it works. Okay. I want to just watch my timer here. Okay, we've got about five minutes left. Now, two things left. One is, it's so big and confusing. The grants are so much that they come, sometimes come up with these delivery agents. I don't have time to get into it today, but I'm going to show you something here. That's what Tech Nation is. So they're, they're giving out, you can see the Tech Nation slide? Yes. They're giving out government, that government grant money on behalf of the government to employers. So as a student, you can kind of learn to get crafty at this now, right? Like you can be like, oh, that's where the grant is. I can get a grant for myself. It's like, oh yeah, super cool. By the way, a bunch of tons of grants for school. I got grants as referee. If you're not winning grants, you should be winning grants as students and stuff. Spend some time at it. It's, you can do it. But anyway, another discussion. Um, that's the gist of it. That's government 101. Now let's get into grants. So I told you there was three levels of government. The first is, let's go with municipal. So this is um, the municipal department and they just, so there's all sports organizations reaching out for them to grant. And then there's the booster club. Look, you can just see, you can go through here. There's a uh, Calgary Flames Foundation. And then there's the, uh, there's just tons. I mean, you can go with, there's the, the Calgary foundations and they can be for charities. Sometimes that can get them. They can be, uh, and like an NGO that will get them actually. And then, so you might work for that organization, or if you get into sports and some of you decide to open your own business and you're an event planning business or something, you can be an eligible expense to the grant. So they're, they're kind of these really interesting entities where sometimes when you win the grant, you have to fund, you have to purchase goods to deliver the project. So you might be working on that side of it. So that it just depends. So anyways, I'm going to go quick, but there's all these grants that you can apply to. Here is, here's the provincial one. So check this out. Uh, CIP, Major Culture and Sports Grant. And it's pretty, I think it's pretty, pretty serious money too. So you come down here and the maximum funding available is a quarter of a million bucks. However, additional funding may be requested. So if you're putting on a big event, 
And then the, the program guide will give you all the details and you'll want to, and again, if I had more time, I would totally dig in. I'll take two, two more seconds. I might go a little over my time, but if you go here, watch this. This is like, if you're into Ikea furniture and you don't read the instructions and you can just set it up, you're one of those people. First of all, I don't like you. And second, um, it's, you can't do it with these, with grants. You got to go in and master like what's eligible and it'll tell you eligible pro projects and what's in and what's ineligible. Really important, but you can figure it out pretty quick. So that's provincial. So we saw there's municipal money, there's provincial money, and then there is, you guessed it, federal money. And, you know, so when they host these big events, I'm, I'm assuming I'm in a group with a bunch of sports fans, you've gone to these events and you see the flag of Canada, like the Canada government flag, or you see the Alberta government flag beside those events, it's because they put money into it. So I think this is super cool. So you can go international sporting events, say you want to work with, like we want to bring, I actually was helping someone one time bring an international event, you know, there's international sporting events for like everything, right? And the government has an interest in this. If we, if I had more time, um, well, why would the government want to bring, I guess it's a pretty good question. Why would the government want to put on an international event? Laura, can you be the mediator on the class? Does anyone want to take a stab at it? Anyone, anyone? <laughs> take a guess. Why would they want to do it? Why would, why would the city of Calgary want to host an international event for one week in, in our city? You get funding for different levels of government? For, for, for building infrastructure? Yeah. etc brilliant yeah that's great yeah so yeah the city puts it on all of a sudden there's federal money i mean cal you've seen this you know we've back in 88 right we get money for uh full infrastructure and, and then it, in the chat we have tourism and income generation totally yeah yeah and so it can align with other initiatives like i don't know if you saw on the screen but one of the departments was arts and culture and the other was tourism so they have the government has the mandate to increase tourism. Well, what a great way to increase tourism by putting on an event where we get, I don't know, thousands of tens of thousands of people into the city for a week, never mind all the hotels and all the restaurants and all that stuff. Um, and making it a great place to live. Oh, that's my timer. So anyway, you'll get in here, expensing projects. This is where I was telling you about the organization won the money. It'll put on the event. So as students, you should be thinking, um, one of the questions I would have is who's winning that event? And you could work, you could work at them, et cetera. So check this out. I think this is so cool. So you go here. This is the open, every grant over 25 grand, the federal government every quarter has to put online. So every grant that they give out over 25K, they have to put online. And just for fun, I put in, um, I put in sport is what I did in the database and there's 5,500 records, 5,561. And I searched them by newest. You guys can see this, Laura? Yep. Okay. Um, and look at all the money that gets put around all these events. I mean, it just goes everything from 800 to 3000. So if you're working at a sports organization in the summer, I mean, talk about add value to the employer. You could write a grant for them in the summertime. Most of you are you know, probably developing your communication skills, but they go small to look at this. Uh, 368 million for the Toronto to put on the Pan American game. So the feds put over, well, 368 million bucks into it as a grant. Olympics, 124 million. So you're in a massive grant sector and it just goes on. You can, there's 5,000 records here of checks going out and you can go by date or no, just, but yeah, by there's the date by the newest. So you can see the last quarter was up. April's listed, although September's already up. 
And grants are in advance, by the way. I just want to leave this tip because we're going to break into groups in a minute. But they list those grants uh, in, in advance. So you know uh, the future, who's going to win. So what I would do, if I were you, I would find out who those grants are. If you're looking for a job when you graduate, I forget who it was, it was Cole or someone who was saying, not sure what I'm going to do. Well, look, they just won 100K and they, you can go to them and say, hey, can I help you with that project? Because they got funding for it already, you know, because the funding's in advance. And then you're going to say, by the way, there's a grant to hire me and that's going to save you money. Let me tell you something. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. I just think that's pretty cool and that's going to impact your life, but I'm just a regular guy. So I don't know. Anyway, I think you guys, I think it could change your life and I think it can make uh, things better for you. So we thought, or we thought let's have some fun. Let's break into groups. I've talk, talked enough and um, I have an exercise. I want you, I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes. We're going to, Laura's going to break you into groups and I want you to do this. Um, and then you're going to pitch them. You're going to go, the whiteboard, here it is here. Clear it all. So I want you to go, one is who, what, when, where, why, and how much you want. Now we have any Shark Tank or Dragon Den fans in here? <laughs> anyone anyone <laughs> i'm going to take this put it in your chat box for you you're going to learn today to pitch for some money it's a big skill and if you master it you're set so we're going to break into the groups all i want you to do is have like a sentence for each one and you're going to compete and then the person that has the best kind of the who would be just let's do an example who would be we're going to put on the 2022 x games olympics bringing in a wrestling i don't know i don't want to take all the ideas you you figure it out when is it where is it why should we do it what's the benefit for the government remember that and how much do you want and then we're going to ask you maybe well 60 seconds to pitch and then 60 seconds to answer uh, questions, rapid fire questions or comments. And then we'll have a winner at the end. So that's kind of where we're at. Hope you guys uh, can do it. And we're going to, I'm going to at least come in online and work with some of the people in the breakout rooms and work with you there. And then we'll come back in 15 minutes. So Laura, I'll turn it over to you for breaking people into groups and stuff. Okay, super. So um, PS, we didn't see the, um, the list in the chat yet. David, so if you want to just put the who, what, where in the chat. Okay, yeah. if you're in the classroom with me, you're already mostly in a group of three. So gather up, um, put, um, take a piece of paper, one, one person's a scribe and one person's going to be the um, person that's going to share this after. So think about that, answer these questions. And then, so I'm going to break out the folks online uh, one of you should put together a group um, Google Meet at uh, Google Drive and then just send me your answers after so you get your participation marks. So we're going to go ahead and break you out into random groups and then um, we're going to do three. And so you're going to go into groups and then we'll call you back when it's time to come. And then we can also Hey, Corey. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. What did you was that talk helpful at all? Oh, very. I took lots of notes on it. Okay, right on. Yeah, right yeah. on. So what I just set the timer for 15 minutes. So um, what are you, tell me about you. What, what do you, oh, here comes Laura's inviting you to return. Oh, I got to return. I'll be back. Okay. Hey, sorry. I put you in a group. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, you can, 
I think, oh, if you take over again, I think you can just join whatever. Okay, I will make myself a host. Or if you tell me, and I can just pop you in a different group. Yeah, I'll go back into, um, oh, I see, join the first breakout. first one with Corey, Dale, and Lauren. Uh, you have been assigned to a breakout room one. Yeah, I'll go in, and uh, how many groups online do we have? We have three. Okay, why don't you give me like sort of five minutes on each? Okay, okay. sounds perfect. Okay. I'll join this. My Wi-Fi was horrible. Is oh Lauren, my Wi-Fi, so I can barely. What is she saying? I can, I barely heard anything he said. But I got. Oh grip. dang. <laughs> Laura, can you hear us? Lauren? She's saying her Wi Fi's. She can't. We can't hear you. Yeah, she said her audio like wasn't working. Oh. And... It, uh, Lauren, it's by the mute button. There's a little arrow. Click that arrow by the mute button and then choose a microphone and it'll work. It'll pop up. You click the arrow by the by the mute, and then it'll pop up. Okay, so she's gonna type. So Corey, I'll just work with you one until we get Lauren on here. Um, okay. What are you in? Like, what are you interested in? in terms of an event? Let's start with the who, because we don't got a lot of time. So, what are you passionate about? Um, well, I'm actually a cheerleader for Team Canada. No way. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> um, so I was thinking maybe like something to do with cheer, but I was also thinking about like the Calgary Stampede and how it's like this huge outdoor event and it like brings a lot of tourists in. So maybe it could be something like outdoors like as well. Okay. So you're thinking out. So w w walk me through it. So, so I mix up. So you've got, okay, give me that again. Um, well, I don't know. That was just like two different ideas kind of, but like I was thinking about like Calgary Stampede and just how like much attraction that gets and stuff. So maybe like, I don't know, just something to do with outdoors. I'm not entirely sure what I'm thinking though. I think, you know what, just for fun, why don't we talk? Um, why don't you go with just for fun? And I mean, we'll go with a major rodeo. Sure. Yeah. You know, major rodeo event. So yeah. Um, a major rodeo and then that's the who and then the what so there's already the existing circuit so are you going to work for the existing like who are you going to work for that's like so how, how do you want to think about it that way um not entirely sure let me give you some ideas so you can either work for the stampede right or work yeah. for a group of rodeo guys who um who want to put on an exhibition rodeo like mm -hmm. you know how there's the and at the national finals rodeo in uh, las vegas it goes like stampede winner of stampede or something goes to vegas okay, so it, yeah it could be something like that right it could be um why don't we have it as the you decide but i'm thinking something like the canadian um amateur rodeo finals like something like yeah. that yeah, I like that actually. Canadian amateur rodeo finals. Now I want you to get creative, but one of the things you can do is you can have, if you think about governments and what they do, disabilities, like underrepresented groups, new people, the rodeo, like you can kind of say, okay, that's why we want the money, right? Cause you're going to be competing all these other people. But if you say, we know the government wants to fund rural development. They want to fund getting youth working. They want to fund people with disabilities, um, getting innovative careers. You could, I'm just saying like something, you get creative like that. So yeah, we're going to do the camera Canadian am amateur rodeos. There's also going to be a component that will fund people <laughs> with um, developmental disability. You know, you can use your imagination, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. So should we target kind of like inclusivity then? 
well, you're getting a tip. You're getting a big tip. Yeah. Right. Cause that's what they want. Right. That's their yeah. on that. And maybe okay. your final, maybe it's women. So maybe we want to target women, getting more women into rodeo and yeah, it's stuff like that. Right. Like I, you can just get super creative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause women don't do like a ton in rodeos anyways, I feel. Yeah. I don't think so either. Right. Um, and then you're going to have to figure out how much. But that is, I think, Lauren, did you get the audio working yet? Can you hear me now? You're back. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Okay. I figured it out. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what my computer was. Everything was blocked, I think, but I unblocked. <laughs> so. Okay, cool. I got could it. You, could you hear us and like kind of what we yeah, were talking I could hear about? everything you were saying. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. So I'm going to be leaving here because I'm going to try to spend five minutes with each group. Okay. for sure but do you have any questions before i go no i got everything um sponsorships from hey guys companies yeah we can ask like local businesses to support but that one not super sure how much hey guys uh sorry to just interrupt i'm only here for a couple minutes yeah hi hi was that okay guys yeah. yeah, David, we have like only one question. Let's say we want to like push an idea of hosting national like volleyball event to improve nice. like the overall participation and initiation for the culture and tourism and people who will come watch their kids playing. So it's like spectators. And we were talking about Calgary, like traveling to the mountains. So this is what we will push for Alberta generation event. But how much, where we should find the money, how we push what we are asking. Is it like on this website or? Uh, you, you go on that open government link and put in okay. volleyball. Okay. Like our yeah, was... <laughs> it's crazy. Like there's 5,000 uh, sporting events. So yeah, you can get an idea. And you know what? When you pitch that, no, the other group didn't mention that. I love that. Just say, hey, we did a little bit of research on this. And, we, you know, so we know what that we're asking for. So that'll get you some points. Um, oh, sure. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I just put it in the chat to everyone. But anyway, um, so any, so you're thinking volleyball, international competition in Calgary? Is that what you're yeah, you gonna... like, talking like maybe like a national wise? Like, so it will be more than like 10,000 people playing and participating like a national wise, like to host in Calgary. They can live in the residences of the universities, which will lower the prices, but also like around areas are very well like transit so they can move around and then like how we were talking days off they can travel with like parents to the parks Canada which will also generate the income and yeah because like when the kids are playing all the families are traveling to watch them it's awesome guys and, yeah great. for future it will like maybe impact and inspire somebody to burst like the sport participation so active city kind of thing the other thing you want to think about guys is Think about the government. Like, this is great that you guys are thinking about this, but like, what do they want? They're always talking about things like diversity. They're talking about um, and, uh, jobs, getting, you know, helping women or uh, uh, new, new Canadians get integrated into culture. Like, Me. <laughs> yeah. So the more you can kind of we like weave these things yeah. in, you can really we're talking also about like volunteers how many opportunities it will like provide for like a first step like of experience for people okay but women and like inclusion yeah yeah uh mark well, you were saying something when i came in what were you saying if you don't mind me um i'm honestly not too sure i kind of got sidetracked sorry buddy I cut you off no 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 it's okay um you guys got the right idea though. So you got the who, the what, the when, where, why. Yeah, you're thinking about it right. We only got about five more minutes before you guys go live competing. But yeah, you're doing great. This is- yeah. uh, So anyway. I think yep. the highest grant that was given was around uh, $2.2 .2 million was a uh, Volleyball Canada not-for-profit. And you know what you can do for a tip is like ask the feds for some, ask the province for some, and ask the municipality for some. I see. Yeah. Cause now okay. you're, now you're, cause you can stack in grants. I didn't say that, but you can stack the grants. Yeah. Well, like I, I know when you apply for, let's say your grants for schooling, you can do the same thing. Bingo. 
Yeah, you guys got it. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I, I want to spend a few minutes with the next group too, but you guys are killing it. Yay. I'm going to write. I've never used these breakup groups before. They're kind of fun. Yeah, they're actually pretty uh, useful. Yeah. Okay, so what we are going to push that we would say that we want to stack the grants and we will start from municipal, provincial, and federal. And yeah. we saw that for a nonprofit, it was generated like 2.2 million. That was the highest grant given, yeah, in uh, April 2021. The okay. agreement, so yeah. We have the proof that like you can generate that much money, like collect or whatever the word is. So this is going to be a huge event then. Yeah, national wise. Yeah. Yeah. So how are people getting there? So you're you're. Is it like the can? Is it a can international? Is it international? No, it's like a national. So like kind of like nationals. Uh, which like right now they're divided by like high schools, provincial like teams, and then colleges and universities. Yep. So it would be like something like um, national wise, we can like put the amount of the the age limit, and people can come and play, or even have like a couple groups of age. So it will be interesting from junior to the higher level, so you can see the improvement of like verbal skills. Okay, great. Sounds okay. Jess, Cole, Drake, what's going on? Oh, not much. Just uh, trying to develop our grant here. Um, all right, well, let's pull it together. So, what do you? What kind of event are you thinking? We only got a couple minutes left. What kind of event are you thinking? Um, we talked about running like a sports week, kind of a, a day camp style, where various sports would be introduced to Indigenous youth. Oh, <laughs> who's the shark? Who's the shark? Good job. That's great. Yeah, we're kind of, so what were the questions you were wanting? It was like the who, the how, the what, where, and the why. Who, what, when, where, why. That's great, guys. You're really thinking smart. Like, because, like, sports is a great way to bring, you know, Indigenous communities into, they're, they're trying to do that all the time. It's awesome. Um, Like, so what would the how be? Like, would like how would we, like, we're just kind of trying to figure out our five basis there. How much? So what would that, how much? Like, how much money we want? Yeah. So what would be realistic for a week is like what we have to figure out kind of thing. Um, yeah, you should call it the budget. So I would search that open database. It's in the chat, figure out how much it's going to cost. And is it going to be national, provincial, international? It'd be uh, like for Calgary, so municipal. It's would it not? Be, oh, it's going to be a, a it's going to be hosted in Calgary, but will be it be indigenous people coming from, everywhere or just Alberta or just? I think it would be smarter to look at like the outreach on um, like reserves and stuff that are nearby, like make it a local run thing since we have such a broad like indigenous community surrounding us anyways here. Okay, cool. All right, all right. That's great guys. This is, uh, this is pretty creative actually. Is there anything like that or do you guys think about it all on your own? Well, we were just kind of like pitching ideas and um, yeah. Cole or Drake, one of them, what brought up how we did sports week when we were in school and that it was paid for by our parents. We were talking about communities that don't have as much access to this type of thing good, good. and then making it free and available for them because the grant would pay for it. So then families wouldn't have to pay to enroll their kids in this program. We would be using that government money to provide an event. Super smart. Super smart. Hey, David, could you throw that, uh, trying to figure out the budget there, could you throw that in the chat? Because I got kicked out of the other chat or the other Zoom. Um, just me... to try and figure out the budget, how much we need for the how. There you go. I just put it in there again. Did you see it? Yeah. No, I got it now. Oh, I see. I'm in your group. I'll direct it to you too. Yeah. Oops. That's our 15 minutes. Um, Okay, I'm gonna go back into the main room and I'll see, I'll let you guys finish up, but I love that. That's super cool, creative. Um, so make sure um, when you talk about the who too, like who, who's putting it on will be a key thing, right? Do we need a, we need an organization or would it be something that we could particularly run or? 
Yeah, that's a good question, right? Uh, they go to what nonprofits. If, what if um, we did run by students like Adam or you, like it was a sign up thing for an event because we even have like indigenous, like, like cultures on campus. And then we have like classes to learn about indigenous history and stuff here. So there'd be a lot of people interested. Yeah, that's cool. Now, normally what happens with grants is you have to be a register, a legal entity. Yeah. Yeah. So you're either going to have to be a nonprofit organization, form a nonprofit and call it whatever, or go to an existing nonprofit and um, work with them. Uh, I'm going back to the main session and I'll see you guys in a sec, but okay. super awesome. See you in a bit. Hey, when it says you asked for help, I was assuming you wanted to change rooms, but did you need I anything else? Because I couldn't type anything to you. But um, I got everyone. Um, uh, my groups, I guess it's, I guess it's sort of like, uh, my, uh, did you help those the students in house? Well, a little bit, but it's like, I'm sure you gave them better advice than I did. Oh, we're definitely going, uh, uh, Laura's team versus, uh, oh. team. we're going toe to toe here. This is fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, think, I think they're ready to go anytime. And can we pull them out of the groups. And is there a timer on Zoom, by the way? Like, can we set them a 60 second timer? Not that I know, but uh, I could, I could put one up on my. Uh, I can even time. I got my, okay. One minute. They're going to get one minute to pitch and then one minute to get questions from class. Cause we got. Okay. And, and can you kind of have backup questions? If... Oh yeah. I got lots of questions. <laughs> Okay, I pulled them out of breakouts. They have 28 seconds left. Hilarious. All right, so we're gonna, in half a minute, we're gonna get going here. People are popping back in the room. Very good. All right, so you can either do one spokesperson or a team, but if you want, you can come up as a team to the front of the class and I'll give you the mic. It might be like good to support awesome. each other. That's great. I love it. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. Do you want to start with online? Yeah, let's do that. Sure. So why don't we're going to start the timer. We want to keep the time rolling because we're time's flying by here. So you're going to get one minute to pitch your group. So Laura, uh, we're going to say um, in the crowd, uh, please, well, the, pers the first person who's speaking, we're going to name your group, that person, the person who speaks. And then um, Laura can figure out, you guys at the end can just give them a ranking, make a note, and then we'll have a vote at the end. And you, you guys are going to vote who wins, by the way. Okay, yeah, you're all going to vote. So I'm going to give you a little... So Corey, do you uh, do you want to start off? I think you're. Uh... <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, okay, you just like we're gonna set the timer for you. All right. So Corey's team. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So get going. Get going. okay. So me and Lauren came up with the idea that we would target like women in sport and more specifically like amateur rodeos. So we'd call it Canadian Female Amateur Rodeo Finals. And it would benefit the government because we already know what works in terms of like Calgary Stampede and we want to enhance positive growth within our rodeo community. So we were thinking that we could start in like 2023 because, you know, COVID and everything is still a thing. And um, where we'd start in Canada and then hopefully move to becoming more international. And we would just want to promote inclusivity within a male dominant sport. And since it's so big in Canada already, we just want to enhance it. And we were thinking maybe like 30 thou to start off with um, just by reaching audiences like further out and bringing about awareness. Um, and the funding would just be used for the events. Um, okay. Yeah. Time's up. <laughs> okay. So, perfect. Good job. Great job. <laughs> on the hot spot. Um, so questions, um, just some quick feedback. Okay. 
love that you're planning the event in the future because grants are always in advance that I said. And the fact that you're thinking out gets you time to build trust, get letters of support, which is so critical in grants. So great job on that. Um, Your point on international and like taking international gets a little bit confusing, right? On the grant side of things, because grants are like, we'll host your event. And now you're talking about going international, which may be cool, but it might be confusing when it comes to writing the grant. In the okay. last, the last kind of thing I'm going to give you a feedback, you're in a competitive environment and you're asking for 30,000. And it's like, you know, we have limited dollars here on the government here side the and government. we want to get the biggest impact as possible. So yeah. I would have liked to have seen a bigger ask so okay. you know thank you for putting it together it sounded really good and i've never done this before but i'm having the time of my life thank you okay thank you so much <laughs> thanks for um, going first yeah <laughs> great job it's actually really well done uh thank you can shoot is uh i'm mindful of time about two minutes per group would that be have we got what how many groups do we have we One. have five here Two more left there, seven. So 14, 15 minutes left. That's close to the end of class, right? So you're, you're yeah. okay with the cadence, the speed? Yeah, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep. And then the, the feedback can be 30 seconds if we need to. Okay, now, um, just to save time, why don't we start with the next group? Who is the speaker for the next group? Did, it, did you guys not decide you want me to? Yeah, but I can, uh, I can go ahead. I'm okay. not sure if we were like second or third, which you did it. Sure, go ahead. Um, okay. Hi, everyone. We want to host 2022 Volleyball National Championship in Calgary for like a youth 15 to 19 females who can visit like everyone. And according to Volleyball Canada National Championship request for proposals, in 2015, Calgary was hosting such event and they generated 27 million for the city. And the government will benefit it like through the tourism because uh, up to 12,000 spectators are expected to come and visit this event, which will improve the overall uh, income generation within the city. Parks Canada and traveling will have a positive side effect. Participation in sports after hosting this event will be improved and the lifelong habits will be generated. Um, how much we want? We want to have 200 grants and we can stock the grants. So it will be from municipal, provincial and federal. So we will not ask for like one amount of money through like one grant, we will stock them. And uh, we will want to increase the inclusion, indigenous people and female participation in this event. Okay, great, great job. Love it. That's awesome. Want to give you some feedback, okay? so. Great job when you do like the $27 million economic impact and you're tying it to tourism and other departments. It's perfect. Cause now you're thinking beyond your other, you know, beyond the one department that you're asking. The one thing you could have talked about is volleyball. Like, you know, you guys might be really passionate about volleyball, but maybe us on the board, we don't know much about volleyball and you didn't tell us anything about the benefits of volleyball. Like, you know, volleyball trends going up, Older people are playing volleyball now and stuff like that. You, you could do that to spice up the application. Um, Laura, 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 did you want to say anything? Oh, Drake, were you going to say something? I'm sorry. I was like saying, like, maybe again, like, you know, English, but like, it's going to increase the participation in sports and like lifelong habits. So as soon as like this event nice. will be posted, it will come and inspire people. Yeah. Good. Lord. No, I'm good to, to your expertise, David. Thanks for the great feedback. Yeah, so really, like a really good job, kind of creative. And uh, just, I think that last pitch is, you know, you're trying, like you're going up against rodeo now and you're going up against these other people. You're kind of seeing, it's like, whoa, okay. Got to make my case that this that is, is important cool. now. So that's just something to keep, to think. Now we have- One more group uh, from online. Who is next? Cool. Yeah, so uh, our group, we talked about uh, for Indigenous youth based in and around Calgary. So uh, we talked about, you know, like when you were younger, you had a sports camp, so you could try different sports and see which one you wanted to get involved with. So for Indigenous youth, we would ask for a grant of $7,500 that could help us uh, take care of funds and uh, anything that involved transportation or general supplies that could help to run 
the camp uh, without them having to pay any of the fees. And we'd have this as a nonprofit organization made up of university students and volunteers and event directors from the university just to help with the whole project. Um, this would benefit the government publicity and it would benefit Indigenous youth to get experience in an array of different sports and work effectively as a team and enhance leadership skills and personal skills. And basically, it would just be in and around Calgary for the most part. And uh, we'd be planning on doing it in summer of 2022. Wow, good timing too. Um, okay, just your feedback. So love the creativity of the Indigenous group. That's awesome. I thought, you know, the government's really trying to, uh, you know, improve the lives of, of Indigenous Indigenous folks. So that was a great job, okay. Um, the ask, 7,500 bucks, in my opinion, it's not nearly enough, like minimum 75,000. Uh, and as you guys get out and start doing these events, you'll start seeing that, but that's just a, it's a, it's a good place to start. Um, the other thing I would just give you feedback on, this is more for the group. Grants always go to eligible organizations. I know we talked about it, but this is just more for the group. So you'll see an eligible applicant, you gotta be a nonprofit. So you really wanna think through who is gonna be the legal entity that applies. And the one thing that I think is missing in your pitch, overall is really good, but one thing you wanna watch for is indigenous participation. Like how are they gonna be involved? You've got students and those really involved, but I would really focus on uh, partnering with local indigenous groups to pull this off and really highlight that in your application. But overall, uh, love the ideas, creative, and uh, thanks for putting it together. Thank you. Great, so we have our first group coming up to do their pitch. We wanted to do it as a team, so. I think you guys are gonna win a lot of grant funding. Like, I, you know, not a lot of people early on get like kind of exposed to this. When you guys figure this out, like you. Emma. Get one for your student. Wow. You, can, you can stand there and you'll be. I think. <laughs> this is this is hilarious. All right. Awesome. So uh, for our grant, we uh, are a non. Uh, sorry, non-government non organization that partnered with. Uh, uh, minor sports organizations in Calgary looking to bring a field house uh, to put house athletic park. Uh, I guess I'll pass it over to you. And uh, we are uh, partnering with Sport House Athletic Park. We propose that we turn the existing field into a field house to promote active living among Calgarians. The benefits can be used for volleyball, soccer, football, ultimate frisbee, and track and field events. It will promote healthy living for all ages. And Calgary is in a, a desperate need of a field house because we have winter for nine months of the year. All right. Yeah. And so to support that, how and where we would go about doing this, we already mentioned it's going to get Foothills Athletic Park. Um, we would need to turn the grass field there into turf as well as putting a dome over top of it and uh, building the required infrastructure for a field house. So what we budgeted the grant we're looking for is going to be a $15 million. Uh, that's based off the price it costed to build foot field in Edmonton. So what I love about this idea is it's very practical. Um, you know, sometimes I like crazy ideas, but you know, you're everywhere you go across the country, municipalities, you're trying to get funds for a tennis court. They're trying to get funds for, um, you know, some sort of facility to winterize it. Right. So it's very practical. The one thing I would say that you want to look at when you get into something like that is, uh, working with partners it's got to be a huge part like when i talked about those three levels of government all three levels will have to be involved so i just would have liked this scene we're going to meet with the municipality we're going to meet with the province we're going to meet with the federal we're going to show them the benefits of this and that tighten it up and honestly it's such a good idea i don't know if it's true or not but it's something that could possibly happen i love that part of it so great great job thank you Sounds like maybe a finalist. Wow. Okay, the next group's coming up. It's hard, right? Like I like to creative, but then when someone comes up and they're like, yeah, we just want to like make this winterize. It's like politicians like that. It's easy to understand. All right. Next, go ahead. All right. Our grant is for Rwandaville infrastructure to host the IIHF World Junior Hockey Tournament in the Okanagan area. Um, and for more things. So we're looking at 2024 20, or after for the World Juniors. And the money will be for infrastructure to build a new arena, at least 15,000 seats for Canada to host the tournament. 
After that, the arena can be used for community activities, big events such as concerts. Another WHL team located there. The current arenas in the Okanagan have no more than an 8,000 seat capacity, so 15,000 would be an increase. The increase will be uh, um, for, it would also help winter tourism, which lacks in, in, in the area during the winter. It'll create jobs, it'll expand and grow urban rare, the urban area, uh, help kids get more access to recreation activities and local and small business owners. will increase revenue in the area due to increased traffic during the tournament as well as after. And we were asking for 75 million. Um, this was based off of the Flames Arena. The government is paying roughly 250 million. So a small arena would be less funding um, and it will be split between public, private and grant funding. And of course this will help areas like Kelowna, Summerland, Peachland, Penticton, okay. everywhere the Okanagan. Okay, a good job, nice and clear pitch. This, it's missing one obvious thing, which is these are such a hot potato. Like people go ballistic when taxpayer money goes into funding these arenas and complexes and stuff. Now, I don't know if it's the same at the, at the local level, but I know whenever they talk about creating new NHL stadiums, you know, there's that. So maybe it's not as big of a deal at the local level, but public opinion buy-in would have to be a big part of it. The other thing, did you say it would have a second WHL team? So there'd be the Rockets and then there'd be a second team? Possibly a, a second team kind of more in the Southern Okanagan because it is like an hour from Kelowna to the Southern Okanagan. Oh, you're talking about this facility being like in Penticton? Penticton or, or Summerland, just kind of, yeah, not, not right in Kelowna, somewhere in, oh. in the Okanagan, but likely so. Interesting. Okay. All right. Interesting. I mean, it's uh, definitely a unique idea and you got the right idea overall. Um, cool pitch. So yeah, I mean, the, the downside is you're going to have to look at economic impact. You're talking about one region and I mean, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's, you, you covered a lot of bases. So I, I I'd say it's a pretty good job. You're going to face some, some opposition, but overall good job. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. And you guys, Okay, next. See, it's like rapid fire. You, you share your idea, you get sure. some awesome feedback. And... So we are a non-for-profit organization uh, working with local community centers and you, we want to target the grassroots, so essentially the use of the um, community. We are seeking a neighborhood grant of 7,500 to help build a greater sense of belonging within their own neighborhood. We have children that end of summer 22 for our like, our, um, kind of like where, where we want to go. We have chosen the Wildwood Community Center as the facilities are dated, and I guess they just need like um, they, they need um updates. We want to improve the facilities in order to increase grassroots participation, um, and update the infrastructure and equipment to allow the to, to allow them to have a boosted like first experience with sport and just an all around greater first experience and stuff. Okay, here's my feedback, and this is for everyone in the room, and this is just me become an older guy now and looking back when I was in school 20 some odd years ago. Okay. You're more of a big deal than you think. Like you're in university now, you're getting your degree, you're becoming an expert in sports. Soon you're going to get some professional. And then in a few years, you're going to be an expert in this niche. So I know, I know you might not think that right now. You think I'm just a student. You know, we want to do this $7,500. But I would just encourage you to start thinking big. Like in grants, you can be big. You can come up with a neat idea and you can win a million dollar grant. Like my sister, the first grant we won for it was half a million bucks. Like you can go big. You can have a big impact. So I hope if you take something from today, I know, I think it was Cole or Corey or someone, I can't remember who it was saying, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I would just say grants are an opportunity for you to make a big difference. And I'm not trying to just blow smoke up, you know, over the zoom screen here. Like you can really do this. So um, great job. I love the initiative. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to say like in five years, I'm going to get, I'm going to, you know, we're going to connect on LinkedIn someday or something. And you're going to be doing something cool. And I want it to be big. I want you to say, yeah, I started with a $7,500 grant and we just won a $7.5 million grant. And you're going to send me a message. I'm like, yeah, you did. Okay. That's my feedback on that one. <laughs> so nice. Thank you. Great job. Okay, you, you want to go? I don't need to tell go big to a sports program. 
Yeah. I mean, they, been, they were born that way. All right, here we go. Second last group. Second last group. How are we doing for time? Yeah, we're good. Okay, Perfect. we are proposing for the ISL as an international swim league. It is an annual professional swim league established in 20... Sorry, could you put the microphone a bit closer? Oh, sorry. So it was established in uh, 2019. So our pitch is about to promote and help Canada in hosting one of the qualifying swim meets for the final. And we are um, planning of doing it next year in I, um, late August and then proposing it to be um, in Toronto in the Pan Am Sports Center. And we are also asking for a $5 million <laughs> grant due to its international event. And, and so the why is uh, the sport of swimming is growing past the Olympics. Yeah. As one of the top five countries in the sport, we owe it to our athletes and our team, the Toronto Titans, to bring this league to Canada. This is the type of event that creates legacies in our community and inspires the next generation. The economical benefits of becoming a signature spot in the ISL Tour would greatly impact not just Toronto, but Canada as a whole, and it would be a long-term investment for our athletes <coughs> and community in the future. So it's an international swimming event, right? Outside of the Olympics? Is that what it was? Okay. I want to talk about this. There's something really important in grants. And it's what I think volleyball missed. No offense to volleyball group. Love the volleyball group. But this is what swim. Swimming is on a trend right now, right? We just had, um, uh, I don't know. I forget her name. She just won a bunch of medals. The gold. Yes. And she threw out the pitch at the ball. I'm a baseball fan. So she threw out the opening pitch. And it was so in grants, government loves trends, like what's hot now, what's the future. And so you nailed that. And I think that is really, really timing is everything. My sister does like women in um, women in careers. And she started in like 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. And then when the new governments came around 18, 19, 20, her initiative in the grants crossed because the government put in their election platform, we want to get women careers around like when the NDP government formed and stuff. And that's when her organization, just, Elevate Aviation, just went, pow, blew up. So you nailed the trend. I don't even know if you meant to, if it was an accident, but brilliant. And I love the idea of taking something that's popular in like Olympics and then and then bring, building on that, which the rodeo folks were kind of doing as well. Great job. I love that. David, I don't want to disappoint you, but Canadian volleyball team is the best in the world, and Canadian volleyball, for some every god, is directed to Olympics. So, <laughs> nice. You said soccer. You would have had me with soccer because you know we just won gold in soccer, right? So maybe the, but uh, <laughs> last group's coming up, and then you have if you're in the class, you have pink sticky notes. You can. Get ready to vote and then the people in line you can get ready to vote and then we'll tally it up okay final group okay so we were asking for about 250 to 300 thousand dollars um if you want to implement gym facilities for recreation space gyms just to provide a comfortable workout environment um sorry they do not have to go to a gym that would be like uh, this gym is like to accommodate like all of their specific needs. We have like a field house track, gym, rehab room, AT rooms. Um, this is for people, patients who need physical therapy. So like for athletes in all seasons, um, obviously any individuals, but also including like the military. Why we want to do this is just because we want to have proper means less rehabilitation. It can reduce the overall health care costs and less people are gonna going to be needing to see like multiple people. So for instance, like when you get out of the hospital, instead of like going on your own to find like a specific like rehab facility or like physical therapy. It's like just right there implemented with um, in Calgary with like associated with Foothill Hospital. Um, this also is going to promote proper rehab rehabilitation and keeping people people physically active. Um, it's also going to reduce the amount of people who are in hospitals. Um, and this will get people back like on their sports uh, a lot quicker than usual as well. Um, we want to try to do this within the next year and a half. Uh, obviously, we're going to start locally here in uh, Calgary, like I mentioned before, associated with Portland Hospital, and then move provincially into Alberta. 
and then we obviously want to expand eventually with the, with the other provinces as well. Ultimately, this puts it under one roof, reduces further injury risks, which will lead to needing more care and it promotes proper care. Okay, great. Sorry, I set the time wrong. That's good. By the way, what was the main, what was, I missed the very first opening. What was it? I got the rest of it. Like, it's just ultimately, it's just for all sport, like all athletes in all sports. It's not really an association with any specific business other than the hospital. Like, we're like partnering with, in the start, Foothills Hospital, just because oh. it's centralized to a lot of sports teams in general. Yeah. So it's not really a specific company or business. In a so, and, a bit. so, is it, who's the organization that's going to apply for the grant? Well, we were, we were struggling with that part. We didn't actually get that. Like we had the whole idea of business, but we didn't really know which one we wanted to choose. So <laughs> kind of just didn't pick one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a few options, but like none of them really stuck. And so we were, we didn't really, yeah. <laughs> After this, I want you to take a media class. When you get a question and you don't know the answer, say, oh, you know, well, we're going to do this organization and say a bunch of stuff that I don't mistake, but don't be like, yeah, I don't know. We didn't really think about it. Yeah, don't do that. But uh, I'll tell you what I loved about your presentation is you're thinking about the government reducing healthcare costs, which is a big deal. You got to tighten up the point that I just made. Um, and, you know, it, it will have a local impact. It's not bringing... I wasn't hearing it's bringing people in. So there's a huge economic impact, but super important touching up, reducing healthcare costs. You might win money just for that alone if you can actually reduce healthcare costs. So some strengths and weaknesses there. And uh, I really appreciate you coming up and, and telling, uh, saying this, it was awesome. Thank you. Nice, okay. <laughs> Big round for everybody who's Yeah, presented. good job guys. And a big round for David for the amazing in, insights and mentorship. Wow, this is really fantastic. So what, what you're going to do is take 30 seconds and write your favorite pitch on your paper or in the group chat. And then we're going to tally it up. I'm going to put mine, I'm going to write mine up on the, and then I'm going to put it up on the screen. Can I vote? Am I allowed to vote? Yeah. We might need a tiebreaker. Okay, I'll hold I'll hold off then unless I'll hold off to the end then if I'm the tiebreaker. Okay, I'm gonna go around. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever done kind of a Zoom live. This is actually more real life than it's our new world, isn't it? Kind of hybrid. Yeah. Thanks a lot for uh, participating along, guys. That was great. Aiden, nice to meet you, man. And I don't, and the Nat, Nakey, is that your name? The Nakey? Corey? Cole? Do you guys know anything about grants before we started this? No? All right, while I tell you this up, um, David, could I ask you a favor? Those three links you sent, um, the students were curious to get the web links. Could you put them in the chat and then I'll share them out um, on our group? Well, I'm going to put my uh, my LinkedIn and my YouTube stuff if you guys want some more. You, uh, yeah, I'll put all that stuff in. Yeah, the I'll share your YouTube channel. I have like 200 subscribers, so I can kind of a big deal, guys. Hey, <laughs> yeah, you can you can follow David on YouTube. Yeah, you'll 200. be on there with like my mom and my sister. We're like one family. There we go. Uh, should be all there now. We have a we have a winner. I don't think we need a tiebreaker, David, but I'd be curious if you wanted to share. But the swimming group came out on top. They were solid. And uh, so that's, 
<laughs> so that's fantastic. And um, yeah, so that was that was really cool. So I'm going to share with you all. David put his YouTube channel up there, and our little session today is going to be up there one day. And um, yeah, any closing thoughts you have? Any life advice that you wanted to just add or reiterate? Yeah, there, David? I certainly do. I certainly do. How much time? I got two minutes left. Yeah, we got three minutes or more. If you want to. Let me give you some uh, tips because I've got nieces and nephews and I always like to talk to them. Here are some things that are very uncommon in your life. Tell the truth. Be courageous. Tell the truth. Be honest. And you'll stand out. You know, work hard. And it's an uncommon, like, don't lie. I, I, and have good values. Have integrity. Don't do stuff you don't want to do. Don't screw up your life in college and waste years. You know, find something meaningful and pursue it. Not to sound like your old dad or anything, but um, yeah, I just wanted to say when we were talking about that earlier, like you can make a big difference. And I showed you something today that the government is trying to reach out to youth. You, I come in here because I care about you uh, just to help you get your life rolling. So it's there make something, make a big impact. And I've been teaching university for 20 years and I still have students come back to me and say, hey, Dave, I've got students that work at Amazon in Seattle and they're all over the place. So I just hope you think big, you do something you're good at and you're passionate about and you have good character and you'll have no problem getting in a job. You'll stand out. Just, just doing that, you'll stand out. So don't stress too much about it, even though all these things are changing. And that's all I got to say. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you guys. All right. Cool. Thank you very much, everybody. Good participation. And That's fun. Okay, thanks, Laura. Thank you so much, David. Take care, guys. Good luck to you. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.